Hey everybody, welcome. Today is July 20th, 2016. This is Dr. Levi with your show, The Dr. Levi Show. I want to thank you for listening, being a part of our audience. And also, I want to say it's so wonderful that we are now a part of the iHeartRadio family. This is really fantastic. So I'm so happy to know that our show will be heard by even more listeners. And I'm happy to say that our show is about you. It's about how do we make you feel better about life, know that you matter, and also understand that the universe, everything is really working for your greater good. So for myself, as a physician, as a speaker, as an author, my job, I believe, is to do one thing. That is to be of service, to help you on your path and to remind you that life is good and things are going to get even better for you. They really will. You know, so a lot going on here in Los Angeles and throughout the world, of course, here, yesterday, we had the passing of uh, Gary Marshall, who was an extraordinary uh, producer here of television. You know, he did everything from Happy Days to uh, Laverne and Shirley. He even uh, did the movie A Pretty Woman, I think it was, uh, with Julia Roberts. So, you know, he'll be greatly missed. Uh, phenomenal talent, uh, great insights, comedy, as well as overall just producing. Just phenomenal uh, human being who really contributed to the the, the state of media and to ed, not only education, but really in entertainment. He really did that with uh, unprecedented vigor. So he's up and uh, he's made his transition. So I'm sure they're enjoying him in, in, the, in, in heaven, of course. So, you know, today we're going to talk also just briefly about about race relationships. We talked about that last week, and I'm going to just uh, talk about this briefly, and that is I want to remind everyone that it's so important that when we're dealing with other people that we really understand that when we deal with other people, they're simply a reflection of us. No one's better than nobody else. No race is better than no other race. There's no superiority issue here. I, I want us to really understand that it's about us doing the best to engender a sense of intergenerational love. Because right now, often I hear the term institutionalized racism. Well, it's really not institutionalized. It's really intergenerational racism. So meaning that people who are racist, this is what they've been taught to be. This is what they believe, and this is what they continue to do. And then don't forget, racism is not one specific color. Any group can be racist. Any person can be a racist. So I'm asking all of us to, to go deeper, to go to a place of understanding, to a greater place of love, of embracing, of less judgment, of more inclusivity, of less divisiveness, and to know and believe that we're all here to serve other people and to be good and kind and compassionate to other people. As a physician, I'm, I'm really so grateful to have the opportunity to meet so many people from all over the world to take care of them and, and to embrace them and to do one thing, to give them the professional loving care and to reach my hand out to them the way I reach my hand out to my family. And I love my family. So I'm asking you to treat everyone the way you want your family treated, to treat everyone the way you want to be treated. It's not that difficult. It really isn't. Well, today I'm going to cover some specific questions that we've gotten from Facebook, from YouTube, and from all our social media platforms. And these are questions from around the world, from gamers and from other athletes, from individuals who have issues with their hands, their posture, their necks. They want to know, hey, what do we do about this? So we're going to talk. I'm going to answer their questions today. And then, of course, if you want to call in, the next show that we do in a month or so will be a live call-in show. And if you want to call in and talk about a problem that you have, I'll do my best as a physician to answer them. But I want to remind everyone, you know, as a physician, I'm not evaluating you. I'm not signed up as your primary care physician is your primary health care provider. So I'm only answering your questions. So I want to say to everyone out there listening that it's so important that you also follow up with your own health care professional in your own country so that you can get proper care. So again, this is advice, of course, but I can't give you medical care because I'm not there to care for you personally. I'd love to do that, though, because I, I love taking care of people. That's, I feel I was born to do that. I really do. 
So we'll go over these questions today. And then also I'll let you know that we have more videos coming. I want to thank you for joining YouTube. Our YouTube subscribership is now at close to 20,000. I last, I think we're at like 19,815, I believe it was. So I'm happy about that. Our total views now on our YouTube uh viewership is at 2.8 million, which is really phenomenal. So I'm really glad that our videos are serving a purpose. As the gamer's doctor, as the esports doctor, my job is one thing, to maintain the health of everyone's body globally. That's my job, I feel. To really specifically with the focus determination, help the gamers and esports athletes because as I've said before, and I'll just reiterate, gamers are athletes. You know, there's no debate about that, period. So, and with the advent of so many games right now, oh, one thing I have to share with you too. Uh, yesterday in my practice, and, and it's, less been, it's been less than two weeks now, I saw my first case, what I'm going to call Pokemon Go Thumb. I'm going to call it PGT of a 14-year-old child who came in and she had pain in her thumb. And so I, I thought it was most likely from texting. And so we started talking, and, and she said, oh, no, 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 I know what it's from. I said, well, I said, what else do you do on your phone or on your tablet? She says, oh, no, Dr. Levi, it's definitely from, from the, the Pokemon Go. And I said, how much are you playing? So she's playing Pokemon Go about seven to nine hours a day. So there you have it. So that's my first case yesterday. So I'm going to document that, and I'll talk about that on um, I'll talk about it more at the next Q&A. I'm also going to write something on Twitter about that today because it's my, my first case. And again, I want to say it's been less than two weeks. I started playing Pokemon Go myself last Wednesday for the first time. I downloaded that and started. And it, it can be addictive like, like a lot of games, but it is, it is fun. But what I love about Pokemon Go, it gives you an opportunity to, to go out in the sun to be outside, to get vitamin D, which is great for our bones, for our liver, for your body in general, for your skin. It also gives you a chance to go out and explore artwork throughout your community. Everything from murals to, to fountains to sculptures. It's really, it's a great chance to go out to, to see so much in the community that you may not even know is even there to be explored. It also gives you an opportunity to interact with other people. And I think that's what's missing sometimes with our overall day, that we're on our computers, our iPads, our tablets so much that we really don't get a chance to enjoy the wonderfulness of interacting with other human beings because that's the great joy. We become better people by interacting with other people. We grow from becoming, being more interactive with other people. That's the bottom line, I believe. So with that said, I want to address your questions. I want you to know also I have new videos coming, new fitness videos coming shortly, the next week or two. That's going to be very, very helpful. I'm also designing right now some videos specifically for musicians that will help them, someone who plays the keyboard, piano, uh, the flute, guitar, you know, these, I believe, they're specific exercises for each type of musician. Now, I'll also do a, a video about the artist. The artist's hand, how the hand of an artist, because they do so many very intensive things, if they're molding clay, doing ceramics, if they're, if they're painting a lot, if they're a sculptor or a sculptress, all of these things take a lot of repetitive motion with your hands. So I'm going to do a video with that. And then also I'm going to do something very innovative and different, I believe. I'm going to do a video about barbering about people who style and cut hair. Because when I was with my barber recently, I was just looking at the angle of his hand, of his wrist, of his shoulders, and I asked him, I said, you know, you stand up all day. He said, oh, Dr. Levi, you have no clue. It's just so intense. I said, I know it's intense. I said, well, what about your wrist? And he started telling me about his, his wrist issues. I said, I would think you would develop wrist problems because of this type of job. And he said, you know, he said, it's so intense. I said, well, don't worry. I said, I, I, I had him laugh, and I said, well, Dr. Levi to the rescue. I said, I'm going to do a video within the next few weeks uh, for you specifically and to help barbers nationally and internationally to help them stretches that they can do after every hour or so to help them maybe stave off carpal tunnel, tendonitis, wrist pain, hand pain, finger pain, elbow pain, shoulder pain. So I asked him very thoroughly a lot of questions, and he was clear that he has pain throughout his entire upper extremity. So you'll see him on camera in a few weeks. We're going to shoot this video soon, and hopefully it'll be a video that can help barbers internationally. 
And then we'll do one for maybe cosmetologists and estheticians. But I think different videos to show that how everyone in their profession is so intense and so specific with their hand movements that if they have exercise to do to help them, they can maybe prevent these repetitive stress injuries. So that's my, that's my new biggest platform right now. Um, other than that, we had a really great interview uh, last week with CNN, which went really well. That'll come up uh, within the next few months. We'll keep you abreast of that and let you know when. And other than that, everything is great here in L.A. You know, my team is pretty phenomenal. You know, Janet and Jarvis and Tony and Darren and Nick and Jamie and Aaron. You know, I'm so grateful to have them because they really allow me to 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 do what I want to do in a way that's going to be uplifting for everyone. Because no matter what ideas I may have, it's always great, of course, to talk about this with a team because one brain is okay. When you have multiple brains, it's always much, much better. And I think the spirit of cooperativity gives us a chance to, to be better human beings. So with that said, let's get into some of our questions. And again, these are questions that have come internationally, and these are on Facebook, on YouTube. Of course, some of these are from, uh, from email that we get. So let's begin. The first one is a Facebook uh, post, which is, I am from Pakistan. I really need your help. I had my shoulder dislocated for about six months ago while playing football. Six months are gone and I'm doing exercise for strengthening my shoulder. Is there any possibility that I will again be able to play football? Thank you, Dr. Levi. So, uh, several things here. Number one, the issue is the following. I hope you had an MRI to look at the internal structures of your shoulder, specifically the labrum, the biceps tendon, to look at the glenoid, the articular surface of the humerus, as well as the, the glenohumeral joint. Because it's so important to see if you have a labral tear, or if you had a partial biceps tendon tear, or if you had a rotator cuff tear. MRI gives an opportunity to look at the muscular structures around the shoulder to see if they've been injured. Now, one thing you didn't tell me, is this your first dislocation? Have you had multiple dislocations? Because all of those have different treatment strategies. So the first thing I'd recommend is to make sure you do have and do get an MRI. Secondly, talk to a true shoulder specialist in your country. You know, Pakistan, there are great physicians there, of course. So speak to someone specifically about that. And then make sure that you're doing the proper rehab program. So which would usually involve, and I'm not saying this is specifically for you because I don't know what the injury is internally, but the usual exercise that we'll have someone do after they've had a dislocation would be internal and external rotation exercises, which are done basically like this. So if you have, if you have the weight in your hand and against your body, you will do this. It's internal and external rotation. So this is internal rotation, bringing the weight from a neutral position with your arm at 90 degrees next to your body, keeping your elbow next to your torso, and bring your arm in towards your navel, toward your chest and thorax. And then external rotation, again, keeping your elbow next to your body and externally rotating. These are some of the basic exercises that we give for rotator cuff strengthening exercises. And then the other part of that would be lifting up to the side like this. And I recommend that if people, if you can do it, to have a one pound, two or three pound weight to do it. But again, above all, none of those should be done until after you consult with your doctor there, specifically to see if you have a rotator cuff tear, a labral tear, a biceps tendon tear, or partial rupture. This is really, really important. So will you be able to play soccer again? I hope so. Most likely you will be. But the key is to have the proper diagnosis because with the proper diagnosis of your shoulder injury, you can start the proper rehab program and hopefully avoid surgery. And don't forget, even though I'm an orthopedic surgeon, as I've said many times before, surgery does one of three things, make you better, make you worse, or no change. So it's always better when possible to avoid surgery. It really, really is. So hopefully a rehab program will help you. Um, so that's that. I hope that helps you in Pakistan, and I hope you get the, uh, the proper care. Now, the next one is, again, they didn't want their name to be recognized or their country, which is okay. So it says, I work out regularly. I have been doing this for two years. For the last two weeks, my forearm started hurting while doing barbell, cur barbell curls. After the set is done and I put the barbell down, 
it stings for a good five to 10 seconds, then back to normal. However, sometimes after a full workout, I feel really fatigued in my forearms, which makes gaming hard. Ever heard of it? Any tips on exercise to strengthen my forearm, perhaps? All right, so yes, let's go over some of those. So one thing I want to share with you, too, is if you're doing barbell, barbell curls, is the following. Make sure when you're doing the curl, I'm going to do this from the side, that you're not flicking your wrist up like this. You want When you're doing a curl with a barbell, you want to make sure that your wrist stays in neutral position. So when you're coming up with the barbell, you don't do this. That your arm, I, I hope you can see this really well, but that, I'll, I'll do this. When your arm is coming up like this, you don't want to flick your wrist up like that. You really want your arm to come up this way, meaning that your, your hand and your wrist and your forearm stays in one plane of motion, okay? That's very important. So it's not this. Don't hyperflex your wrist. Don't hyperextend your wrist when you're going down with the weight. You know, when you're lifting weights, there's the concentric motion, and then there's the eccentric motion. And the key with when you're bringing the weight up is to keep your wrist in one position to not, what I call, flick your wrist or extend or, or flex your wrist, all right? So that'll help you, number one, with respect to decreasing the amount of forearm pain you have. The second basic exercise that you can do, and we've, we've talked about this on the show before, and these are the nurtial exercises that I love. And nurtial, if you look it up online, it's spelled N-I-R-S-C-H-L. That's N-I-R-S-C-H-L. But I have them right on my website. Our YouTube channel has multiple exercises for strengthening your hand, wrist, and form. I recommend you go to our website first because our YouTube station has everything there. Yeah, I think if you go to other areas, it might confound the issue. So just go to our YouTube station. I think it's best to get everything that's informational, that's correct, uh, and that, that will really help you, I believe. So the nurture exercises... Your arm is straight, you bend your wrist down or, or flex your wrist, and you hold this motion for 30 seconds. So if you do things like our, our engineer here, Mr. Jarvis Essex, Jarvis has to do a lot of things with his forms back and forth with his hands. So this would be a great exercise for him to do like that. So you hold 30 seconds, then you lift your hand up. I'll do it from this side, the other hand. Here, elbow straight. You don't simply bend the fingers back. You bend the fingers and the hand back, but keep the elbow straight. And if you want to feel it more, you can just use the fingers also, and you'll feel your, your flexor tendons there and hold it back, arm straight. So what you're trying to do basically is really stretch out your forearm. So that will help you also. The, the other thing that I can share with you is that if you're having pain in your forearms from any exercises, then it's so important to say, okay, you're having pain, well, use less weight. You can maybe increase the intensity by doing more repetitions, but use less weight. The goal with weightlifting and being fit in exercise is always to have proper form throughout your exercises. It's not about how much weight you're lifting. That's never the issue. When it comes to being healthy, it's about the quality of the weight, yes, but it's more importantly about the quantity of of the, I want to say it like this. It's more about the quality of what you're doing. That's a better way to say it. So it's better to lift less and do it properly than to lift more and not do it properly, which can lead to injury. So I hope that helps. Okay. Now, the, and then the other thing too, you know, if you're hurting like that, is to stretch before, during, and even after exercises that involve your, your forearms. Okay? That's a lot of exercise also. Now, the next one. Uh, is, hello, Dr. Levi, I have a question. My hands are getting cold only right before I have an important match, eSport. After 20 minutes, they feel normal again, but before that, they are really cold and I don't have a good feeling. Is this a mental problem? Am I mentally sick or what? Because I don't know anybody else with this problem. So let me just say this. No, you're not mentally sick. No, that's not, you're, there's no mental problem here. What's happening is it's the stress of everything causing this vasoconstriction where you're stressed out about the game. So what's important is what I teach to the athletes that come to my office, I'll share with you, is take time right before you're going to go out onto the field of play and just be still and quiet and maybe just don't talk to anyone for maybe two to five minutes before you start. And in your mind, have peace. See yourself and see your team winning, 
So just relax about it and just know that you're going to enjoy the day. You're going to enjoy this event. You're going to enjoy the esports. Don't don't have the stress about it because it's the stress that's causing your hands to feel this cold, clamminess. You know, I don't want you to feel that way. It's a game that you're going to win, of course. You have to believe that in your mind. You have to think yourself as a winner, see yourself as a winner, believe you already won the game before you got started, but more importantly, taking time to meditate. The value of meditation cannot be overemphasized. I meditate every day. I think it's really one of the elixirs of health, and I think we should do it on a daily basis. And when I say meditate, I, I want you to define that in a way that works for you. I define that for me as taking time to sit, sit still and calm for 15 minutes to half an hour, once, twice, sometimes three times a day. You may be able to start out at maybe just two minutes or three minutes or five minutes. The goal is to simply calm your mind, to not let the insanity of what's going on in the world affect you. Go to a place of inner stillness and calm and believe that everything's going to be okay because it already is, all right? So I think that will help you. The other thing that you can do is hand warmers. You know, I, I'm, I'm not big on the way hand warmers, the design of them at all. It's, it's, a, it's a joke, really. Um, so I'm, I'm working on some things about that. Um, but you can use hand warmers. Uh, you can put your hands in warm water before you go out to the, the field of play, which is much better than hand warmers in general because of their design. See, hand warmers are not properly designed. Their design needs to be really redone, and I, I'm, I'm going to work on that. Um, so, yes, those are things I think will help you with that feeling of cold in your hands. So just relax. You'll be fine. And know and believe that you already won before you started gaming, no matter what the game is. All right? Now, the next one is... I thought it was a very interesting question, so I want to share this with you. And this was from Facebook. Hi, Dr. Levi. What kind of hand exercises would you recommend for surgeons? So I, I love that question because, you know, I am a surgeon, and I, I, thought, it, I thought it was great, you know, and I, I'm grateful that I have fellow surgeons reaching out to me to ask um, for my expertise I, you know, because I love sharing knowledge. I think it's the best way to, to really unify the human field is sharing, sharing what we know. So I, the best ones that I like are, are these. I'll show them to you. Um, the stretches that I like doing are before, before surgery, I like doing this stretch where I just cup my hands here and I cup my, I'm literally cupping my, my fingers as well as my wrist and I hold like this. And I hold that for like 30 seconds. And then I do the other side and I hold for 30 seconds. It's like the, the cobra stretch basically. And I hold for 30 seconds. And then I take my fingers and I pull them back and I hold for 30 seconds. And again, I pull them down this way and I hold for 30 seconds. Always keeping my, my elbow straight also. I do the same on each side. Fingers back and then fingers this way also. So I'm extending my fingers, then flexing my fingers and hold. The other things that I do is this. Around the world and back around the world. And then I do the prayer pose where I hold like this. And then I do the reverse pose which is like this. And I hold everything for about 30 seconds. And then I just do the shaking exercise where I shake my hands out right before I actually go into surgery. So I really appreciate the question. I, I wish you would have acknowledged which type of surgery that you do. You know, are you, a, are you another hand surgeon? Are you a heart surgeon? Are you a neurosurgeon? Uh, there's, there's so many different types. Pediatric surgeon, I mean, there's so many. A general surgeon, there, there's so many different types of surgeries. So I hope that helps you. And if not, you know, give me a call at my office. I'd love to talk about what you do as a surgeon, too. That's, that's interesting. Now, I also had some questions from YouTube. So the first is, any suggestions on fixing forward head posture? It's really common on gamers as well as the spine posture. Uh, so yes, so let's talk about that. When when I evaluate the gamers and the esports athletes who come into my office, literally from all over the world, the major thing we talk about is postural alignment, and it's it's really easy once they they get it, they get it. So I want to just show you some basic things, and I'll do some from the side because I think it'll be easier to see. So it's so important. 
that when you're gaming that you don't do this. Roll your shoulders down. Let's say if you're playing with a console, for example, roll your shoulders down and, and roll forward like this with the, with the controller in your hand like that. You want to make sure that when you're, when you're playing any sport, when you're at the keyboard, for example, posture is so important. Even when I'm here talking to you, I'm always aware of my posture. It's, just, it's important. Even, even my, my staff, you know, that we work together on the team, when we're together. I know they're always aware of their posture, you know, because like my, uh, my manager, uh, Janet, and our engineer, Jarvis, they literally have perfect postures. If you were here right now, you'd literally see them sitting just just straight it's, it's really really great so um and we know to do that so i want you to do the same thing so when you're gaming you want to make sure that you're upright in this motion your your chin is upright your shoulders are square you're not leaning forward not rolling your shoulders back but upright like this and the monitor should be 16 to 20 inches in front of you of course and if you're playing on the keyboard then of course, the keyboard is right in front of you. Make sure that you have either maybe a gel pad for the keyboard or a wrist pad also. Those are good. And make sure that you, if you can, have two different gel pads to change them out every hour because after you've had your hand on them for an extended period of time, they compress so much that they're not really as effective. All right? Um, the other thing that I, I would say, too, is when it comes to posture is reassess yourself every 30 minutes. Just think, you say, oh, where am I? Am, am I going back to that position of comfort? And often comfort is a place of, of being like this, rounded down. So you don't want to do that. Again, you want to stay shoulders up, head up, and relax and just play the game, period. Uh, I, ho I hope that helps you. And also make sure that you have a chair that has proper back support, that your feet are placed firmly on the ground, you know, just shoulder width apart, that you don't have your legs crossed when you're, when you're gaming. I don't recommend that. Um, just keep your feet planted and your body aligned. And make sure that when you are playing that your elbows are at 90 degrees. All right? So next question, a lot of questions here, so thank you, is, hey, Doc, I'm 25. I've been gaming since I was six. I've been doing your hand exercises because my wrists get sore. They, they really help so far. I will keep it up. Thanks. Even if my hand does not hurt at any point while gaming, is there a chance that I might get RSI? And RSI stands for repetitive stress injury. Also, is there a way you can train your hand to withstand greater strain? Great videos. You should post your content on the League of Legends. Subedit midday. All right, esports loves you, Dr. Levi. Well, it's really nice of you. So, so thank you for that. And I, of course, I love esports and I love the the gaming the athletes. So let's let's talk about that. When it comes to hand exercise and wrist exercises. Because gaming is so intense and it's so competitive uh, and it's so much re repetition for, for your wrists and fingers and your shoulders and your elbows overall, again, the recommendation I, that I've stuck to and I continue to, to cry out is the following, and that is to take a five-minute break every 60 minutes to really stretch your wrist and to rest your wrist, to stand up, shake out your legs, walk around for a second, uh, it's so important to do that, just to give your body and your mind a break. Even when you go back on, you are really on. But the body, I feel, if you don't give it a chance to rest, it will lead to other things like pain, inflammation, stress, and of course, then the inability to play because you have so much pain that you can't play. You know, you you can't type as well. You can't click as quickly on the mouse or you have to change the settings on the mouse or change the sensitivity to be even more competitive so you really want to be aware of again the setting of your mouse with respect to sensitivity because if beginning if it's very high or low it means you're going to move your wrist and hands even more for the cursor to catch whatever you're catching on screen if you're firing at something so and then, of course, make sure the keyboard is properly set in front of you and that it's ergonomically balanced. That's so very, very, very important. And the other thing, of course, is to do the stretches. Again, our YouTube channel has, has one video on there or two specifically for gamers, and it says on there, hand, forearm, 
and I, I think it's hand, wrist, form, strengthening exercises for gamers. It's the specific one. It has about 800,000 views, I believe, uh, if not more now. It's a, it's a lot. You know, it's helped a lot of people. So I believe it'll help you. So I would go to the video. It's on our YouTube station. And please subscribe because I think when you subscribe, you, you get uh, knowledge that of the new videos when they get posted. And we have a lot of new videos coming up. A lot. We did a lot of taping this past weekend. We have more taping we're going to do soon. So get ready to be just blasted with a lot of great knowledge to really help the gaming community. That's that's my job as the as the gaming doctor and the esports guy. That that's what I do. Um, so now the other question here was very specific: Is there any way you can train your hand to withstand greater strain? Well, so I'll, I'm going to answer that from the the aspect of being a physician, then I'm going to answer that from being a, a gaming guy. So let's talk about it. There is no science that I'm aware of and no studies that have been done to show that there's something that you can do to, to train your hand or wrist to be stronger with respect to gaming. However, I'm going to give you, as a gamer, uh, for example, let me tell you what I think. I think the bottom line is this. The more you gain, the stronger that you become. The more you do something, I think your body becomes aligned with the pressures that you put on it. And the body is this really spectacular, amazing, dynamic, kinematic instrument instrument that can be forced to do what we want it to do. And I think it can perform even better when we take time to simply let it rest and recuperate. That's why it's like working out. I work out every day. I don't let a day go by. I work out every day. However, I don't work out the same muscles every day. So that the muscles that I worked out on Monday and Tuesday, you know, they don't get worked. They, I worked it on Monday. They may not get worked again until maybe Wednesday or possibly Thursday. You know, you have so many muscles in the body that you can work throughout the week. So there's never a need to work muscles every day. Like you've heard people say so often, uh, for example, is it okay to work calves and forearms and, and abs every day? Well, I always say no. I, I, there's, I, I can never say there's any muscles you should work every day. Now, if you do a, what I call a very light workout, you know, work abs hard on a Monday and do maybe like something really light, light the next day, I don't see anything wrong with that. If you go hard every day, the same muscles, same muscles, same muscles, well, they break down and you don't give them a chance to recover, to heal and to get stronger and to really incre increase the density of the muscle tissue there. So you want to give your, chance, your body a chance to simply rest and to heal and to get better. And when you do that, you become more fit. And there's nothing like being fit. So with respect to gaming, it's the same thing. Uh, you, have to, you have to play a lot to get faster and let your body know it has to just step up to do it. However, if you have pain, discomfort, or swelling, or numbness, or tingling, then you have to back off and let your body go to that place of healing. That's important. And then if you feel badly, of course, you know, give me a call via Facebook or YouTube or if you're in town, come to my office. I see gamers there literally every week. Every week they're there. So you really you find community in my office because that, that's where people come. And uh, that's what I do. And it's a good thing because so often, as I've said before, the, the gaming community has so many different types of RSI injuries that I'm grateful to have the experience as a surgeon and as a, as a physician to really help people have those injuries. Because one thing about it, if you don't do something about them sooner, guess what? There will be issues, period. That's where the body goes. You either take an injury and you get better and you do the work to, to recover and to rehab, or you will suffer and make it worse. So that's the bottom line with that. Now, next question. Uh, hey, Dr. Levi, do you think you can make a video on fixing your posture or maintaining a good posture with a sedentary lifestyle? Thank you. Also, thank you for the very informative video and for appealing towards gamers. Well, thank you very much. Grateful to be of service. So let me tell you a few things. Posture is important. We talk about it here on a daily basis, basically. Every show uh, with the, with, when I'm talking about uh, injuries, posture comes up. So let's go over this. Again, as I said before, make sure that you have an ergonomically balanced chair. And again, I get this question all the time. Well, Dr. Levi, is there a chair you recommend? Is there a brand you recommend? There really isn't. 
there's none that I recommend. They all do basically the same thing. I've not found one that I absolutely love, but they all do basically the same thing. Um, so get one that you really like. Secondly, of course, have an ergonomically balanced keyboard and mouse and a mouse that works for you. That's so important. And if you have a controller, you know, if you're gaming, have a controller that really fits your hand properly that you don't feel as either too big or even too small because that doesn't help either. And then, of course, mouse sensitivity. It's important that you adjust the mouse's sensitivity so that you can minimize the amount of movement at your wrist and your fingers. That's important. Have a gel pad for your wrist, a gel pad for your hand if you can. I think those do serve a purpose. But again, as I said earlier, make sure you change those pads or at least switch them over every hour because they become so compressed that they lose what I call their, the, the true thing that they're doing, which is to, to mitigate and to, I should say, minimize the amount of flexion that you have or extension that you have at your wrist. You want to make sure that when you're using a mouse again, your hand is in a fairly neutral position. So I'm working on a mouse design also. So there's so many projects that we have going right now to really help the community of gamers and esports athletes. But I think the end, when they come to market, they will, they will help people tremendously. That, that's the goal. And uh, it's going to happen, period. It will happen. Now, let's go to another question. Uh, well, I want, to, I want to say something else. I want to answer the question, though, here. Hold on. About sedentary lifestyle and posture. So... Number one, I would say try to not have a sedentary lifestyle, meaning try to do something every day. If you can only get up and and walk around for five or 15 minutes, something is always better than nothing. Just just a little bit to remind your body that you appreciate it, that you want to be healthy, that you want to be fit. So do just a little, just something, you know, but but to just stay at home with the with the remote control in one hand and and not doing anything else, no. I, I, I want you to not have a sedentary lifestyle because that won't help with respect to your cardiovascular health, your endurance health, your strength, your, your ability to stretch and be flexible. You want to use your body. It's the only one you'll ever get. So use your body to be strong and to be healthy. That's what I want for you. So for, with respect to posture, number one, you know, leave the sedentary lifestyle behind, leave it in the dust, put on your running shoes, your walking shoes, and, and go walking and running or hiking or jogging or swimming. You know, get a trainer for a while if you can. A lot of gyms, for example, you go to the gym, they'll give you a free trainer now for like one or two sessions to try to bring you in to get more sessions. But if you only get those two and get the basics, then you're ready to roll. You know, so, but, but don't be sedentary. That, that, that's not, you know, as a physician, when I hear that, it just makes me want to, you know, come through the screen and give you a hug and say, hey, no, let's not, let's not be sedentary. Let's, let's walk together. Let's move together. You know, Michelle Obama, she said it, right? Let's get moving, if I'm not mistaken. So we want to, we want to keep moving. We want to, want to go forward in our lives. That's so important. Now, so with respect to posture, if you're watching television, for example, make sure that you're sitting upright. Uh, if you're on the keyboards, if you, if you're gaming, again, you know what I've said before, Upright posture, shoulders upright, head upright, chin is up. You're not leaning forward, not tilting forward, not rounding your shoulders. That's the ticket. Um, now, let's talk. I have one more question here. Uh, thank you, Dr. Levi. I have a question I'd like to ask you. I've been struggling with some back pain for a while, and I think it's partly because I'm often carrying children a lot at work and partly because of my sitting posture while gaming. I always have this urge to pop my back, which I do often. But what are some good ways to improve a bad sitting posture, mainly for the back, the spine, whilst still keeping it comfortable? Well, again, as I said before, you have to practice, practice, practice. That when you're, when you're at dinner with friends, next I, I want to share this with you. Next time you go to dinner with friends, don't say anything. But just look around at the people at the table and watch how many people are sitting there rounded shoulders, crouched over, you know, just uh, in really, really poor alignment. So you want to maintain proper spinal alignment. That's number one. Number two, be cognizant of it. Number three, 
Do the stretches and strengthening exercise for your back. Again, the YouTube channel has it all on there. You know, our goal with the YouTube channel is to make it an encyclopedia of fitness, health, and well-being. So when you have a question, you don't have to go to Wikipedia. You don't have to go to this site. Go directly to our website, you know, which is, you know, our YouTube station is my name, Dr. Levi Harrison. Our goal is to to be of service to you to give have everything there. Where it's a one top sh- one stop shopping. You go there, you got a nutritional question, done. You have a fitness question, done. Have a posture question, done. So if you go to the, the station, the YouTube channel, it has everything on there about posture also and what to avoid, how to make your posture better, how to strengthen your rhomboids, how to strengthen your lower back, how to strengthen your traps, your latissimus. All these things are there. So. We had a lot of questions today. I uh, and it looks like I'm trying to lose my voice. Can you believe that? You know, I'm, I, I guess my body's saying, "Hey, be quiet, Levi." <laughs> so listen, I, I hope this was helpful. Again, this is Dr. Levi, the gamers doctor, the esports doctor, giving you some insights about your many questions that you've sent me via Facebook, YouTube, and email. So I hope it helps you. Remember, every third week is our call-in show. And next month in August, it'll be a live call-in show. So we expect callers from, again, all over the world. Again, today we had Pakistan, India. We also had questions from Korea and some other countries, but we can only put in so many, you know, per show. Um, But we'll get to more. And, of course, I try my best to answer all of them uh, via email as well as on YouTube and Facebook as well as Twitter. So be sure to uh, interact with me on Twitter also. I love Twitter. Tweeting is a... A great way of quick self-expression, I think. This is Dr. Levi. Have a great, great week. And I will see you back next week. Bye.